justify it's, yourself. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm at the point in my life. I'm not going to justify it to somebody. I'm not going to explain it. You either get it or you don't. Right, and if exactly. you don't, you know, if you don't, then I honestly don't give a shit. Right. Um, now, if it's somebody who doesn't get it that they're legitimately interested in, you know, like they have legitimate questions and are like curious, then that's a different story. If you're coming from a more pure uh, place, but you know, I, I have no interest in trying to justify the music I play or the music I like to somebody who clearly doesn't get it and, and doesn't want to get it. I, I don't have any energy for that. Right. No, I see. I have an open mind. I, I listen to a lot of different stuff. So, no. But a lot of people don't know, you know, that the technical skills that these musicians have, it's not just about um, the scream and it's not about Satan. If you listen to the music, there's not very many people who can play like that. Technically. Absolutely not. Technical, technical death metal is one of the most physically demanding types of music to, to, to play from a physical standpoint. And you know what I think it is with extreme metal, whether it's black metal or death metal or grindcore, whatever it is, any sort of extreme, extreme metal, um, you know, people get turned off by the vocals right off the right, bat. Exactly. And I, I do I do understand that to a degree. I mean, um I I do understand that, but they don't listen like there's some unbelievable musicianship, the guitars, the drums. A lot of those drummers pick any amazing drummer from any crazy uh extreme metal band and those guys are built like athletes. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like the amount of cardio, the amount of cardiovascular ability it takes to play the drums at that speed, the amount of strength and stamina it takes, they're pretty much like athletes. Um, and you know what? Like, just to digress, getting back to that topic of, well, I get turned off by the vocals. You know, I'll give you an example of a band that's still kind of in the underground, in my opinion, a band like Rush. So. Rush is one of my all-time favorite bands. Uh, you know, obviously legendary prog rock, prog rock band. Right. Um, but that's the same argument. Uh, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I listen to Rush and I'll hear somebody say, "Oh, I could really get into them if it wasn't for the vocal. If it wasn't for the vocals." Well, I mean, that's the other end of the spectrum. Getty Lee, he doesn't <laughs> obviously he's not doing death growls, but people will get right. turned off by his voice. So it doesn't matter what kind of I mean, I've heard that about Guns N' Roses, classic Guns N' Roses, sure, another band sure. that I love. And people, ah, Axel, the voice drives me nuts. So, I mean, it happens in all realms of, you know, rock music for the most part. Um, but just, I think extreme metal gets singled out for more, whereas, you know, at least with Rush, because they have, like, great instrumentals, and, and a lot of other bands, you know, people will get into that. But... I, with extreme metal, it seems to be, well, I can't get into the vocals, and it's much more dismissive of the entire thing right off the bat. Right. No, I, I agree with that. And, you know, a lot of people think these musicians are stupid, too. I mean, go ahead and try to play a Suffocation song or something by Nocturnus. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be that simple. Anything by you guys. I mean, it, it's very technical stuff. Look at Atheist. Um yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's all that's all bullshit. I mean that's all you know, just just stigma again. You know, the, right. the, the same type of people that are telling my wife that she shouldn't be admitting that she's going to see Sabbath. Like, I don't want to be a part of their world at all because those right. are the people that's that ridiculous. watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, <laughs> right? Know? Exactly, and the and those those fucking stupid ass uh, Real Housewife <laughs> shows that absolute <laughs> garbage that pollutes your mind. And is doing more to, I think, to destroy our fucking society than any sort of music or social media or video games or anything. That kind of bullshit that they try to pass off as quote unquote reality. You know, it's like uh, I, some of the most brilliant people I know I've met. I mean, look at, I'll just give you examples of these people I know personally. So look at Hanel from Markerdon. That dude uh, has a doctorate. You know, he's, uh, I, I don't think it's my place to give away what he actually does for a living, but uh, he, he, has a, he has an actual, like, PhD in, uh, in the medical field and is in, you know, does a lot of stuff with, um, 
uh, like uh, uh, what the masseuse called. Um, I'm drawing a blank, but in that field of like body healing and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, he has an actual doctorate in what he does. So very, very well educated, went all the way up through college and obviously to grad school and all that. Very, very smart guy in terms of alternative, you know, dealing with alternative medicines and all that stuff that he does with. Uh, Glenn from Isolated Antagonist uh, is a military veteran. Uh, that was part of when they were recording that second album. He was on active duty over in Afghanistan, you know. <laughs> so, uh, like, and clearly, like, not a stupid man at all. Like, not only is he a combat veteran, but has incredible IT skills and engineering skills that, you know, that he uses in his everyday life. Um, you know, I, I work with architects and engineers in commercial building all the time. Like, I actually, today, was just, did a, a large presentation for a group of architects um, in the commercial building industry on a particular project that we're working on. And I work with structural engineers every single day on live and dead loads and, uh, and vibration and dealing with camber and whatnot, all within the realm of steel and decking and joists and whatnot. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that people are, they, I think they automatically, because of shows like Metal, Metatopolis and and uh, just the, the whole culture of metal, right. like when you look at the way it's lampooned in movies, like you got Bill and Ted and fucking Beavis and Butthead, and, you know, it's that image of, you know, the metalheads that's all like, yeah, gnarly. Uh, You're right. Just, yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, you know. really. I mean, and we do it to ourselves. I mean, that's the popular image. It's the same if you're a surfer. There's some brilliant people out there as a surfer, but to get lumped into that uh, valley, you know, that valley girl, beach boy kind of yeah. way of talking, which I don't know anybody that actually does that. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I mean, everybody thinks, hey, man, he's the smart guy. He's got a radio show. But technically, all these people like you and Hanuel and all that, that, you know, you guys are, are well educated people. And, you know, sometimes that gets dismissed for them because of the music but that's you know it's just the lack well, of also, education think, on the other side you know what i'm saying yeah and i think people people again you know getting back to the people that are obsessed with like this mainstream crap uh, because they look at it as money and they're like well why would you want to play a type of music that isn't going to make you money i can't even begin right. to tell you how many times I, somebody has been like well why would you play extreme metal it doesn't seem like that's very like don't you want to be rich and be a rock star well, like, you want what? to be true to yourself it's like my friend he, that's part of the show here cats and yama he's a rock metal musician i mean the guy's been offered record deals and he just don't take it because that he he's not doing it for that he's doing it for yeah. his purpose so but anyway we digress so much off the band and the reason you're on so you got a band skin drone um you guys do play some really hard stuff. Uh, I played a song in the beginning of the show. And then you have, like, more of an instrumental, mellow. So it's it's almost like two different worlds, kind of. But I explain that to me. What the problem is. It's was. just... It, it started off being, like, really technical, extreme music, you know, because I'm really into the the super progressive, really highly technical stuff. Like, you know, I mentioned Rush, but also bands like uh, Necrophagist and Obscura, Gorgut, Spawn of Possession, Gojira, you know, stuff that's obviously very, very intricate and highly technical. So that's what we started off as. And then as Eric Martin, you know, Eric Martin's the vocalist and lyricist of Skin Drone, you know, as we started writing more together and being more comfortable with, with writing with each other, he brought more of his influence into it. And I don't know if you ever heard of any of his solo stuff, but he does some very, like, dark ambient, very austere kind of uh, creepy instrumental type stuff. And that started weaving its way into what we did, and we started layering the music more uh using that kind of approach and it's all it all happened naturally like none of this is really pre-planned everything just kind of happened organically in terms of how we ended up making the album that we made with evocation that, is this the first album that you guys put out as skin yep. drone cool 
And How? this is the debut, you know, the debut Skin Drone album, Evocation. So it's out there right now in a digital format, and you guys are getting ready to release a physical version of it? Correct. It came out on uh, June 14th. Sorry about that. Uh, it came out on June 14th as uh, strictly an online an online release. And then, uh, you know, we did really well with pre-sales. So actually, we sold so many copies in pre-orders that we were, we were able to pay for not only a lyric video, but we were actually able to pay for the full production cost of all the physical CDs. So, like, it did that well as a pre-order that we were able to pay for, you know, a video and all the physical CDs. So we're pretty proud of that. So right now we're they're being made and we're bundling them uh, with our t-shirts. We just had some t-shirts go on sale and we're running a special just for this month that if somebody buys a shirt, you know, we'll throw in a CD for free because, you know, it's about getting music out there and, and getting people involved. And so, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Right. And, and you get a shirt. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't illegally download a shirt. <laughs> right, right. That you never know. Maybe you can. We'll be able to print them off the internet soon. Who the hell knows? Maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't <laughs> speak before I'm fully. You know, you might be able to. So that's funny. So, how long have you guys been together? Uh, Eric and I started making music back uh, about 2014, the winter of 2014. <laughs> And we spent about six months just, you know, throwing ideas back and writing and, and rewriting and scrapping songs and then doing new stuff. And so there was definitely a long period of, you know, refining our craft and working together. Um, but once we eventually kind of got some stuff going on, we started just putting out demo versions of the songs for free and letting people download them and, and, uh, you know, Eric was making his playthrough videos and all that just to get people involved. Um, and then probably around halfway through last year, I think last winter is when we decided we were going to sit down and focus and actually rewrite and re-record all the songs to make an album. And so that's what we spent all winter doing. Uh, Chase Fincher, who's from Critical Dismemberment, which is another band on One Face Records, he ended up doing all of the mixing and mastering. I did most of the production, uh, and by that I mean I, I got the tracks all ready for, for mixing and did the various editing and whatnot. But Chase did all the mixing and mastering, and uh, man, he did a phenomenal job. Do you, um, do you do all your recording in a home base studio, or... Yeah. You, oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I have my own studio, and Eric also has his own studio. So uh, it was pretty easy for us to to do our stuff in our respective studios and, and just email each other wave files back and forth to, right. to show each other what we had done, or we do our own rough mixes to relay ideas and, and work with each other that way. That seems to have become basically the new norm and how most people are recording these days. So you can basically have band members any virtually anywhere now, and just the problem is getting together for rehearsals for a show. But other than that, um, do you guys go out and do live shows yet, or what's going on there? Well, we don't because you know, as, as you just mentioned about people, I'm I'm located just outside of Boston, and so, and Eric is in Arkansas, so we're about a thousand miles apart, uh, and. I mean, we're not even in the same time zone. He's right. an hour behind me, so that makes it difficult. <laughs> oh, absolutely! But it's not. It's not. It's not impossible. We have talked about it um, about maybe like booking a uh, like a one or two week tour here, and then doing another one or two week tour there, and basically, you know, maybe he would fly up here to the New England area, and we'd play a bunch of shows, and then drive, you know book shows going down towards the south so we would start up here work our way down there so that we would end up in his neck of the woods and then i would fly back up here and then and then doing that again just the other way me flying wow. down there down to arkansas play a bunch of shows as we work our way back up here end up here and then he would fly home and do it do it somewhere that way so that you know, one person flies to the other, and then we work our way back, and that person flies home uh, as we kind of crisscross the country. 
Well, you, um, you seem like you got it laid out pretty good. So 